This week on Open Foss Training, we'll be installing Ubuntu 1404 in our virtual machine. Welcome to Open Foss Training. I'm your host, Matthew Williams. And as I said at the beginning, we'll be installing Ubuntu 1404 inside of our virtual machine that we previously set up. So, without uh, much ado, let's go ahead and jump right into things. We'll switch on over here to our Windows 10 desktop. And the first thing we need to do is to download what we're going to be installing. And for that, we will be heading over. Actually, let's bring me back into frame here first, just a minute. So we're going to be visiting http colon slash slash www.ubuntu.com slash download slash desktop to start this to start our download. So, sorry I didn't actually bring me back. Um, but, as you can see, here we are at the download page. And it gives us a couple options. We can download Ubuntu 1404.3 LTS or Ubuntu 15.10. Which, Ubuntu 15.10 may be the latest, but we're going to stick with Ubuntu 1404.3. This is... LTS. What LTS is, is a long-term support. And this means that it's going to have five years of updates guaranteed to it, whereas Ubuntu 15.10 doesn't get quite as long of updates. So let's go ahead and stick with the long-term one. And we've got a couple options here. You know, you can choose either 64-bit or 32. And since we set up a 32-bit VM, we're going to go ahead and download a 32-bit ISO and click download. Now what an ISO file is, is it's just an image file that contains all the same kind of data you'd have on a CD, which you can burn to a CD if you want, or there's other options such as we're going to use here for uh, VirtualBox and use it as an install media. Now they ask for, you know, a contribution, and I've contributed in the past, so I'm going to go ahead and choose this option, not now, take me to the download, and you can choose the same as well. And if you want, you can, um, con you know, contribute to them, or, you know, skip the not now, take me straight to the download. And we'll get here, and, you know, your download should start automatically, as you can see, the download has started. I'm going to cancel this because I've already downloaded this previously. The next thing we need to do is come over here to, you know, Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager, and we want to click on Storage. And where it says Controller IDE, click the next little icon down where it shows the CD and says Empty. And over here, optical drive option, click the uh, little icon again and choose virtual, virtual optical disk file. And as you can see right here, Ubuntu 1404.3 desktop. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and click open. And click the... Um, live CD DVD option. Actually, I'm not going to. Sorry, mistake there. Gonna leave that unchecked and click OK. And now we're ready to click Start. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch on over here to a closer view of the VM. Sorry. And here we are with a little closer view of the VM to make things a little easier. And we're given two options, try or install. And I'm going to click the install option. Don't worry, we'll go through this together and, you know, help make things pretty easy. Now, one option you can do during this install to make sure you've got a nice up-to-date system when you're done is to click Download Updates While Installing 
and then you can choose this install this third party software. Now for a virtual machine, you may or may not need this. I'm going to go ahead and click it for now and then click continue. All right, so here we're given some more options here. As this was a blank disk when we created, the heart, the virtual drive we created was blank. It's going to give us some options here. And you have the option to encrypt the new Ubuntu installation for security. And it, notice when you click that, it automatically clicks use LVM with new Ubuntu in installation. LVM is a type of management and we'll come back to this a little later but for right now just know that if you choose the encrypted option you have to use the LVM with new Ubuntu installation so go ahead and click encrypted and this will create an encrypted disk and we're doing this for practice for later so go ahead and click install now and because we chose to create an encrypted disk we have to give it a security a security key, a key to unlock this drive later when it, you know, reboots later on us. So the password I'm going to choose for now, and I recommend you choose to stick along with me, is the password unlock me. Now you'll notice over here, it says this is a weak password. And it is, we know this is. And if this were a system that we were using for production, I would recommend a password that only you know and as strong as you could make it. So we'll go ahead and click install now to continue the process. And it says, if you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disk. Otherwise, you will be able to make further changes manually. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. All right, the next thing it's gonna ask us is, where are you? And this is so it can set your time zone information on your computer in the future. As, you know, click on the map where you are, or you can just type, you know, where you are and choose something. I am near Indianapolis, so I will go ahead and choose Indianapolis time, United States, and click continue. And now here we have the option to do choose your keyboard layout. You can just click, you know, what language you use and what keyboard link keyboard layout you use, and it's properly detected mine already as English U.S. English U.S. But you know, say you were a Dvorak user or you used a Mac keyboard, you could choose a different layout here. You know, something more suiting to your needs. Then click continue to move on. All right, so now it wants us to create our username. For the username, let's just tell it our user is, our name is user. And for the computer name, let's call this OFT Ubuntu for Open FOSS Training Ubuntu. And pick a username. It's already picked one out for us based off what we gave our name as user of the username user. Now for a password, to follow along, let's give it the password, password. Now, yes, folks, this is not a secure password. This is not something I would recommend you use. Again, if, if you were installing this on a machine or you were using this in production for anything. For testing, this password is good enough, but this is something you would want to make sure you give a personal password for if this were an actual install. So we're going to leave the option require my password to log in and we're going to click the option encrypt my home folder. Now again, this is something we're doing more just to be ready for in the future. What this does is not only have we now encrypted the entire disk that Ubuntu is being installed in, but we're going to encrypt the contents of the user's home folder as well. So we're going to do as much as we can to protect the data that we do put in here. And this is more just to get you in the practice of using something 
for when you do an install later. So click continue to move on when we're finished here. All right, and now we've actually started the process for the install. As you can see, it says it's installing the system here and we get this nice little slideshow we can go through to tell us a little more about the system as we're installing. Now, for experienced users, this is a screen that actually kind of bothers some. I think this is really nice because it lets you know, you know, a little bit more about your system, what's there, what's available. So feel free during this install process to click through this and kind of see some of the things that are, you know, available and what it has to offer. And otherwise, I will be back after this process has completed. All right, folks, and here we are. The comp the process is completed. As you can see, it says installation is complete. You need to restart your computer in order to use the new installation. So go ahead and click restart now to kick off and restart your computer or your virtual machine. I should be I should say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and here you are. As you can as you can see. We get some uh, messages as the system's restarting, and one thing I've noticed with VirtualBox, when you choose the encrypted install options that we do, it sticks, it hangs at this point. So, to actually get back to our machine, we have to do one more thing. You need to click File, or actually up here in the top, choose Machine, and Reset. Unfortunately, it's not capturing it on mine for some reason, but then you'll get a box that pops up and says, do you really want to reset the following virtual machine? Go ahead and click reset. And here our machine will start to reboot. And you are now given the prompt to enter the password. So let's go ahead and enter our password of unlock me to start booting up our machine. As you can see, the crypt setup was successful. So we'll continue on into the, you know, boot process. And when you get here, to the message it just showed, just give it a second and let it continue on. And here we are at the login screen. It's already, since there's only one user on the machine, which is the user, user, it's already go, gone ahead and filled that in for us. And we can just put in our password, password, and hit enter to go ahead and log in here. Give it just a moment here to log in. And here we are. So, here we are at the Unity desktop that Ubuntu uses for its installation. Browse around and kind of look around, see what you want. And when you're done, And one thing that'll pop up after the install is give you the option to record your encryption passphrase. And, you know, it'll give you the option to, you know, back this up. 
again, if this were an install on a personal machine, this is something I would definitely recommend doing. But for now, I'd go ahead and just click close. So when you're done playing around with your system a little bit, and you're ready to shut things down, up here in the top right corner, click the gear icon, and come down here and choose shut down and you'll be given the option to restart or shut down your machine. Go ahead and sh choose shut down and your machine will shut down and log off like that. So I hope you can see whereas installing a Linux operating system is not a difficult thing to do. It takes a little bit of time but installing any operating system is going to take you a little bit of time. So now you've got an installed system you can play with and start to learn a little bit. We'll be back soon and we'll start going over some of the basics of the system, showing you how to do basic things such as, you know, na basic navigation, how to install new packages, how to update your system, and how to add new users. You know, these are some of the things we'll be covering as we progress. And, you know, I have to make sure, you know, to thank the people who helped make this all, you know, become a reality and to help get us here. So, you know, I have to thank all the producers, you know, and the couple companies who are backing us, you know, without them, I couldn't help bring this content to you. So until next time.